Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show, where we discuss all things wealth management and retirement planning. And as always, the goal of our team here at Semax Financial Group is to help you focus more on your life and less on your money. Now, as a reminder, check with your current advisor, planner, CPA, and read our disclosure in the video description below. Subscribe to this channel if you want to stay up to date on all of our new content. And by the way, if you have questions or need a 15-minute free consultation, please visit Semax.com or call 336-856-0080. Welcome to the Jay Tyner Show. We've got the whole team here. Well, not the whole team, but we got a good amount of the whole team. That's, that's good Matt, Michael, Larry, thank you guys yeah. for joining us here. And yes, we just wanted to kind of give you a quick update. Matt came into my office today and he says, listen, there's been some serious changes in the SECURE Act, the 2.0, and it just happened. We need to get it out to the folks because changes are, could affect you next week. And, and so here we are. We're going to do this really quick, and let's just jump in. There's so many of these that we need to cover. Uh, you know, We won't just repeat them. We're going to hit them quick. If you have questions, feel free to give us a call here at the office. Michael, there's new rules around the RMDs, Required Minimum Distributions. Right, and more, more specifically around the age where okay. it's required to take your required minimum. Um, so it's going up to age 73. So if you were planning to take a required minimum this year and you're because you're turning 72, you don't have to anymore. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, it's also going to progressively inch up to age 75 over the next about 10 years. We'd heard it, we'd heard it might go to 74, but now they're saying it could inch up to 75 that you don't right. have to take an RMD. Okay, so interesting changes, but definitely one that's affecting us right now. Which is really cool because if you have to take an RMD, then do a Roth conversion, well now, Hey, you may not have to. You got more. You got more RMD uh, uh, removed years where you can do those Roth conversions. So right. it's pretty right. cool. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, another another slight change on the required minimums. Um, of course, you always want to take your required minimum because the penalty was fifty percent of the amount if you didn't take it. They're actually reducing that, oh, so right. it's going yeah. down to twenty five percent. Um, starting in 2023. So and to confuse the math, that's a 100% reduction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, a, okay. it's a good thing. Yeah. They, they, good, the, right? the penalties are going down, So, but we still want you to take your required minimum. 25% is still a pretty stiff penalty. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> it, it is. Um, so. All right, Larry, I think there's a jump in catch-up contributions. So I know that there was a provision where as you got older, you could actually put you know, you could defer more, but tell us about that. It's gone up, I think. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's gone up to 7500 for 2023. Um, you can add uh, catch-up contributions to your uh, 401ks up to 7500 in 2023. Um, it's going to rise again to 10000 in 2025, but it's only for those between ages 60 and 63. So that's the caveat there. Got to make sure that, uh, you know, you're between the ages of 60 and 63. They threw that in there to, to tweak it on people. Um, these numbers could also be adjusted for inflation over the next several years as well. So, so there's a lot of potential changes exactly. in the changes. Okay. Exactly. Sounds, right. Sounds like our English language. Right. right. Now, a lot of they keep it confusing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt, 401k enrollment changes. All right. So this I'm really excited about. This one, this one if you haven't thought about it before talk to those kids uh, those those college students those those young those young folks that are getting started instead of it being an automatic opt out with a 401k where you have to go to hr you got to fill out that paperwork you got to choose to contribute now it's an automatic opt in it's automatically opting in at three percent so that's three percent the company's matching and then next year it rises up they're they're raising your automatic contribution and so it for those of you that don't pay attention to these kinds mm -hmm. of things it's a way of just getting that retirement savings going i think this is a fantastic change yeah exactly. i remember when kristen first got her first major job where she had that opportunity she was saying oh do i need to do this, do I need this? of course that's your wife right many years <laughs> ago um she was asked so now it's just automatic right? yep she's, right. yep. she's in so she doesn't you, have to ask dad it's like you have to ask dad if she doesn't want to do it right. so so when adeline when the grandbaby is oh, yeah, is working yeah, yeah. it's just happening okay. it'll be great right. it was even good get the grandbaby working real soon here um <laughs> all right roth accounts eligible for matching michael did we cover that one yet not yet okay. um right. Right. so we haven't covered that so that's a nice change as well because normally you contribute to your 401k you get a generous employer match that match from the employer goes to a pre-tax account so what this is saying in the change with the the new law is the employer can actually match into a roth 
matching bucket of so, money. So check with your employer because this year mm -hmm. they're uh, they're uh, eligible to do that. Okay. Right. Correct. Right. Uh, Larry, matching for student loan debt payments. We've heard a lot about the student debt stuff, but what is this referring to? Uh, uh, this is up. typically um, specifically referring to um, if you're paying off your student loans and you pay off X amount in debt, your employer can contribute that amount to your retirement account. It doesn't take effect until 2024, but it is a nice way to make sure that if you're paying off that debt, your employer does have the opportunity, if they choose to, to contribute the same amount that you do in debt to your uh, retirement account. They don't have to, but right. they can. And, and in all of these things, folks, just again, call your advisor. If you don't have one, you know, give us a call. If we're your advisor, talk to the guys to see how you can apply some of these changes to your specific situation. So 529s, we've got some 529 changes and 529A changes. Matt, yes, uh, and they so are good. not the same thing. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a 529 plan is a, a, everyone understands that to be a college savings plan. Well, in the Secure Act 1.0, they changed the rules to where you could use that for pre-K through 12, right? So now they've said, well, what if you didn't go to private school? You've been contributing and now my kid, not, it's they're not planning on using it for higher education. So now you have the ability to roll Roll it into a Roth account so you can take that. It can go into the Roth account. It is in the name of the beneficiary. I was really hoping that, you know, uh, mom and dad could roll right? it in their own. Yeah, exactly. it, it's, it's for the kids. Yeah. I'm sorry. But uh, they can do that. But the beneficiary, it has to be after 15 years. So this isn't something where you can you can put it in and all of a sudden your four-year-old has a Roth account. They're, <laughs> they're making it be that 15-year delay. That's different from a 529A. Now, a 529A applies to folks with disabilities. So if you were disabled prior to the age of 27, so 26 or below, if you were disabled, then you had the ability to contribute to a 529A plan. There are limits on that. If you're on a Social Security disability, it was a limit of 100000 For those of you that are not, the limit's actually going up to 500000 which is quite a bit, and they're raising the age. It's no longer if you were disabled 26 or before. It's all the way up to 46 or before. Nice. So that's a significant change. That one's not taking effect until 2026, but that's going to be really, really positive, uh, especially if, if you've got two folks um, trying to work towards retirement planning and someone goes into disability. So All right, I let's really keep, like keep that. Keep going. A lot of things here. We've still got, uh, Michael, we've got the emergency <laughs> savings. There's been some changes there, especially as it affects maybe employers. But what about the emergency savings account? So thanks, Jay. The emergency savings is really, uh, it's in effect for 2024. So starting next year, um, if your employer offers a retirement account, they can allow you to contribute to a Roth emergency savings account. Um, again, effective 2024, it's up to 20, excuse me, 2,500 per year um, that you can save. Um, and you, you can actually make four withdrawals yearly. So it's kind of like a super savings account. Uh, and it is only for non-highly compensated employees, but it's a good way for um, maybe younger folks starting out to build up a, an emergency savings account. Um, the employer does have the option as well to match those contributions to that emergency savings Roth. Okay, lots Very of nice. things in these changes that have come down the pike, and some of them are effective immediately. Give us a call if you have any questions. We, uh, we thank you for tuning in here to the show. Give the guys a call and set up a 15-minute you know, conversation with them if you have any questions. And we'll see you next time.